Could you just give people a brief primer of what is HPPD for those who have never heard about it before? Sure, sure. Um, surprisingly complicated question, but I suppose the, the 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 meat and potatoes of HPPD is that this is a particular after effect people report after taking lots of different kinds of drugs. That's what we're learning increasingly, but it seems especially psychedelics are prone to causing this after effect. And it's basically when you experience primarily visual changes after a drug experience. Um, and there are, and there's a sort of stable list of perceptual changes that people experience. So you have something called visual snow, which is the appearance of your entire visual field being coated in almost like fine granular dots. And this is something that people might have reported who've never taken drugs. It might be a fairly normal visual phenomenon, but it seems people with HPPD experience this to a much more intense degree than, uh, than most you know, drug free people report. Um, and then you also have something called after images, which is something people might have experienced in psychedelics, which is when you look at an object and then when you look away, a kind of bright silhouette of the object lingers elsewhere in your visual space. Uh, you have something called when well, you've got you've got trails, you've got traces, cl classic psychedelic effects. People might report geometric patterns, uh, mandalas, kaleidoscopes. They might see melting walls, shifting text. Uh, they might see halos, which is when an object is essentially bordered by uh, a, a bright kind of almost literally angelic halo style thing. Uh, and, and for me, it's, it's like a kind of bleach, bold, white haloing. That, that, that whenever I see halo, that's what it's like. And with, with HPPD, it seems that they can be categorized into two basic kinds. Uh, the, the first type in the literature is called type one HPPD which is when these perceptual changes come in episodic kind of spontaneous flashback experiences, like the classic flashback we've been told about, where it seems that just for, for, a, for a defined discrete period of time, you're thrown back into a, a kind of altered visual space. But type two HPPD, which seems like the, the far more common experience people with this, uh, with, with, with this condition, is when it's a more lingering, invested feature of your everyday perception so it's not like you're just experiencing it episodically like this is how you see now and in order to kind of be categorized as hppd it has to kind of have a clear maybe proximate causal link to the to the to the, to the drug experience and, and and you really get into murky territory on kind of defining what exactly is and isn't hppd because as we'll discuss later in the podcast it overlaps with with other conditions that didn't necessarily involve drugs at all, but generally it seems that in a, in the for, for many people with kind of psychedelic induced HPPD, it's kind of in the, perhaps the day after or maybe within a few days or within a week of a drug experience they start noticing things, and HPPD can last a few weeks, a few months, can last years. I've experienced these perceptual changes for six years. Uh, you see people on forums who have had it for 40, 50 years. So the kind of old school trippers from the 70s and the 60s. Um, and we kind of have no idea how common HPPD really is because it's kind of an under-researched after effect of psychedelics. Uh, psychedelics in general are very under-researched, but it seems like HPPD is particularly under-researched. And you can see that in the literature. There's a lot of confusion embedded within it. But... There was a survey done about 10 years ago by a scientist who might be familiar to a lot of people kind of deeply involved in the psychedelic community called Matthew Baggett. And together with Erowid, he did a survey of, I believe, about 2,500 psychedelic users of whom I believe a quarter reported some kind of permanent perceptual alteration from a psychedelic. And then about one in 25 of the sample reported that this perceptual change um, this lingering perceptual change was so intense or so overwhelming that they considered seeking clinical help. So if we were going to, if we were to use the, the, the technical kind of DSM diagnostic and statistical manual definition of HPPD, as opposed to the more general, um, what's the phrase, um, commonplace definition of HPPD, which is just kind of perceptual changes in general. The DSM definition is, you know, these are perceptual changes that are so distressing they constitute a mental disorder. Um, yeah, so it seems that it's, it's very rough, but if as many as one in 25 really do experience kind of distressing perceptual change, I think it's concerning, um, and I think especially concerning 
given that it, it does seem to be so under discussed and kind of when I first sort of started coming out as someone who experiences HPPD and was seeking to motivate conversation around it, it, it was concerning, you know, given these quite red flag raising statistics that people weren't talking about it. And this is why I'm here today.